When you search the term cancer research in Google, it will return over three quarters of a billion results. Even if you just refine that all the way down to looking at scientific articles within the website PubMed, you'll still find about four and a half million hits. It's just too much for one person to keep up with. So if you are someone who's interested in cancer research, whether that's a cancer patient, a family member, a fundraiser, a student, a cancer researcher yourself, a clinician, whatever it might be, then Really, you just want someone to give you the highlights and see what's the latest going on across the whole field in general. And that's what I'm going to aim to do with this new series from Cancer Research Demystified. Please bear with me for this first video. It's my first try at this new format, but the aim here is to give you a highlight from the last month or so in the world of cancer research. I'll give you something that's been talked about in the kind of mainstream news media about cancer research, something that's been getting a bit of hype or buzz within the scientific community ourselves, whether it's a new publication or a conference or a preprint or something like that. Then something that's a new recent technology that people have been excited about within cancer research recently. And finally, some local news, whatever it is that we've been up to ourselves as I am a cancer researcher myself based at UCL. So for this first video, let's take a new story that has been getting a certain amount of excitement over the last month. It's actually about a new clinical trial for glioblastoma or brain tumors where they're actually looking at combining cannabinoids with chemotherapy. Now, you might recognize the term cannabinoids if you've been watching our channel before, because for one of our spam filter episodes, we talked about cannabis and cannabinoids. What's the difference? What's cannabidiol? What do they all mean? And whether or not they can be used in cancer. Now, there are a lot of people out there on the internet suggesting that cannabis itself could prevent or cure cancer, as well as a larger group of people saying that, well, maybe it just helps with side effects on some level. And a lot of this comes down to which specific compound you're actually talking about. So generally, it's not just, you know, cannabis itself, like smoking a joint is probably not going to cure your cancer. But there are this whole kind of range of different molecules and different approaches. And some of it actually does really hold some genuine interest in the field. So it's not all just kind of Facebook rumors. This latest trial is looking, yes, at whether cannabinoids can help you with your quality of life, which follows on from some of the research that we talked about in our previous video, which is from quite a few years ago now. Um, but it also actually does look at whether cannabinoids could help with actually extending people's lives or even improving their overall survival. So we'll be curious to see how that trial goes. That's exactly what we were calling for in our last video and saying we hope someone does it. We're not working in cannabis or cannabinoids ourselves, but a lot of people are and we're very excited to see where this goes. So it's nice to see that there is progress in this area. Um, it's an old favorite from our channel. And it's something that obviously does get the public talking because of the kind of cannabis association. So it's always kind of good to see people talking about cancer research. The bad side of this is that as can happen in the mainstream news, sometimes this has been misreported as cannabis rather than cannabinoids. And, you know, some of the, the news stories maybe overhype it a little, which is good to bring hope, but maybe brings some false hope for, for people that might not benefit from these findings for quite a few years. Um, another aspect why this one hit the news particularly big this month is that it was kind of endorsed or promoted by Tom Daly, who is a recent Olympic gold medal winner diver from the UK. And uh, he's very much in the public eye supporting a variety of causes, including this one, because unfortunately his father died of a brain tumor. Now, this is always kind of good for the cancer research community when someone who's in the public eye gets behind a cause and draws attention to it. So that's kind of why it came to my attention and why I kind of keep seeing it noted everywhere. It's because of this sort of celebrity angle to it. Uh, so it's an interesting one to read about. You can see it on various news sites. And over the coming years, we'll be very excited to see where this trial goes. Now, within the academic cancer research community, one paper that has been getting shared a lot on Twitter and talked about a lot in the community is actually a commentary that came out in the journal Cancer Cell. The title of the commentary is Developing and Validating Model Systems for Immuno-Oncology. Now, 
it's a commentary rather than an original article, which means that it's a group of experts come together to talk about kind of general patterns, shifts, improvements in the overall field. And I like drawing attention to these because if you're kind of casually interested in cancer research, this would be a good uh, place to dip your toes in and kind of see what the latest goings on are, rather than going really deep into one specific finding. This commentary talks about an issue that we're really interested in ourselves, and that's how to accurately model cancer within the lab. When I say model, I mean a way for us to study cancer without actually having a human patient in the lab. So that would usually mean looking at cells down the microscope, and we've done videos on those before, or work on blood or tissue or animals, various different kind of ways of looking at cancer biology in the lab. Now, one of the biggest issues around this is that it's very difficult to study the immune system's impact on cancer in the lab. So a lot of our models are kind of cancer cells in dishes, and so they don't have a functioning immune system around them. There's no lymph nodes, there's no immune cells. And it's something that's been really of interest to a lot of researchers around the world who've been trying to improve this. So this particular commentary comes off the back of two workshops. One was in 2017 and the second was in 2020, where experts came together to suggest what are kind of the most exciting advances in this field. Some of them are around computational methods, like using deep learning to better understand how findings from one immune model could apply to another. And also different ways of using animal models. So mice are very commonly used, but they also talk about use of either monkeys or dogs as well. Now, of course, there's ethical considerations around animal work, and there's also pretty significant biological considerations because dogs and monkeys and mice are not humans. And part of what this commentary does is talk about some very sophisticated biological methods for improving how biomimetic these models can be and how good of a job they can do of really recapitulating the human tumour environment ex vivo or outside of the body and particularly how they can do that with regards to the immune system, which has always been one of the key challenges in this area. So if you're interested in cancer research, I would recommend you read that commentary and I'll put a link to it down below. Now, moving on to the technology section of this video, um, I think I can kind of consider this section of this new series to more be like looking at new toys. And certainly uh, that's how I like to look at new technology in cancer research, because I find it really fun to, to play with new technology. And I think I'm not the only one. Uh, so one toy that I've been having a look at this month is from VizGen. This is a freely publicly available tool that you can use to interactively look at single cell spatial visualizations. Now, the data set that they have available at the link that I'll share down below is from neuroscience, but the technology that underpins it has been applied to oncology as well, and it certainly has relevance in cancer research. The basic premise of what's being looked at here is to look at gene expression, but actually look at it across a sample. So in cancer research, historically, what we would do is take a sample of tumor tissue, kind of blend it up into a tube and then run sequencing experiments on it or next gen sequencing where we can actually look at the expression of hundreds, thousands or tens of thousands of genes in that one sample. Lately, in the last few years, new technology has been developed called spatial transcriptomics, which allows us to not just look at the expression of each gene in that one blended up tube of tissue, but rather actually look at how that gene is expressed across the tissue. So in the different cells, in the architecture of the tumour, the different areas of that tumour, and how each and every individual gene can be expressed across it spatially. This sounded like complete sci-fi when I first heard about it a few years ago. It's become a real interest of mine. There have been 20 or 30 companies launched in the last couple of years alone to look at new, slightly different technologies to kind of answer those same questions and kind of do that, that same approach of looking at gene expression in space. It's a 
really quickly advancing field and actually it was the nature method of the year in 2020. So if you are interested in biology and you haven't heard of spatial biology yet, then I can assure you, you probably will soon because it's really starting to take off. Uh, this particular technology link below is just for one data set in one version of this technology. But if you look on my blog or on any really biology website, you will see that there are a lot of competing ways to do this. And it's an area of exploding interest at the moment. So uh, it was really what I had to mention for my first video of uh, our cancer roundup is spatial transcriptomics. So uh, that, that's this month's technology and hopefully we'll have uh, new different ones each video to tell you about the latest, most exciting technologies in cancer research. Finally, for these videos, I think it's important just to give you a little bit of research news from locally. So from the work that myself and Hayley and the other researchers in London are doing. And so I guess the first piece of news is that we held two online events this summer for researchers. The first was hosted by my colleague, Dr. Irene Velliou. And that was relevant actually to the one of the things I already talked about in this video, because it was about looking at models of cancer in the lab. Um, it was a half day event where we learned about all different ways to really model cancer in a very sophisticated way in the lab using tissue engineering, 3D culture, and various different methods to try and get really good representation of what a tumour behaves like, but in the lab. And that was a really, really exciting day. And then the following week, we had the kind of second one of our kind of twinned events, and I hosted that one. And it was about the other topic that you heard about in this video, spatial transcriptomics and spatial biology in general, and the kind of latest tools and methods that are available for us cancer researchers to see how genes, proteins, or the molecules are expressed across a tissue. So that's what we've been up to for the summer. So it's been a period of kind of new ideas, new technologies, making new connections, even though we're still online and kind of getting, you know, plans in place for our new grants, our new projects and kind of building up the, the new science and technology behind cancer research for the near future. So it's definitely a period of hope for us. Uh, I'll bring you a little piece of good news or what we've been up to locally in each one of these videos as well. So hopefully you enjoyed the first of our cancer roundup videos. It's a new format for us. Uh, just to give you a bit of background, if you are familiar with our channel, then you'll know that we've already covered a lot of the basics to try and demystify the world of cancer research. So telling you the basics of how cancer biology works, what a cancer research lab looks like, what cancer researchers do for day-to-day -day jobs, kind of interviews with different people, whether it's scientists like myself and Haley or clinicians, clinical trial coordinators, people from all kind of different areas of cancer research. Now we're at a point where we think we've kind of covered the basics. So we've had a bit of a break during the pandemic to focus on the day jobs. And now I'd like to come back with this kind of new format to actually start updating you on new items in cancer research as they kind of come up and as they're getting talked about both in the mainstream media and within the scientific community. I'm going to try and keep the pitch of these videos to kind of a semi-lay, semi-technical level. So let me know how that was for you. Uh, if you're a researcher, was this too much in layman's terms for you? If you're a patient or a family member, was there too much jargon for you? Try and let me know uh, in the comments and I'll definitely take that on board with the next video. The aim is to do one of these roughly once a month and I'll keep going for as long as it's fun for me and as long as you're enjoying it. So do let me know if it's something that you're interested in me continuing with. And with that, that's the end of the video. Please do hit subscribe so that you can see our future videos. And if you'd like to engage with us on social media, you can do. We are on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, Tumblr. I mean, everywhere you, you can find us. Just search Cancer Research Demystified and you'll see mine and Haley's faces in the profile picture on those various different sites. So come say hello. We would love to chat. We really enjoy it when we get messages from patients who've learned something from our videos or if we've given people just a little bit of hope for the world of cancer research and I guess that that word hope is really what I'm trying to achieve with these new videos to show that even though the world of biomedical research has been pretty focused on COVID for the last couple of years we actually are still generating pretty exciting data in cancer research and new things are happening in cancer so there is really cause for hope. So thank you for watching this far and I will see you next time.